Uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my reaction to the Dexter Season 6 finale. Uh, this is how the world ends. Before I get to the end of the episode, which I will get to at the end, um, which is a completely different thing from the rest of the episode and pretty much the rest of the season, um, let's just go through the episode, which probably had enough plot holes in it to fill an entire season, but whatever. Um, yeah, so first, Dexter's saved by illegal immigrants on a boat. One of them turns out to be an asshole, so he gets to kill them in front of people that he would normally never ever get. You know, he normally wouldn't be able to get to kill anyone in front of anybody, but he does here. Um, everyone buys the idea that he was knocked off his boat and his boat was gone despite the ring of fire happening the night before no no connection that's you know even that even that's a little like you know I figured he was gonna get out of it in some stupid way or whatever some lazy writing way which was you know so it happened not good was him being allowed to go in first to the crime scene with his face painted on the wall. We, oh, he gets there and Batista's there and he gets there and he go and Batista's like, um, we've been waiting for you. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? We've been waiting for you? I thought, I, the reviewer that I read, that I said in last week's uh, review, who came up with some idea that he would be able to work his way around it because he stopped the wormwood thing, that's a better idea. Instead they just, you know, lazy um then they put um Harrison in, in danger which was stupid because you pretty much figured they weren't gonna kill him off if you're gonna put someone in danger put you know they should have put like Jamie in danger um instead of Harrison um also I read the whole thing with him injecting himself um that was supposed to be they were gonna somehow reveal that he he took all the liquid out and then he just didn't really inject himself. Um, but they said it didn't work in like editing and stuff like that, so they just left it out. Now that's a, that's at least an explanation for some of that, but also that means he's injecting himself with air, which I'm pretty sure. Well, I guess if it's not in a vein, does it still kill you? I don't know. Also, Colin Hanks is Travis was pretty much the only person, like in the world that would know that he was fake he like that thought that he wasn't faking it every Dexter fan knew like he you know he didn't happen um I feel like I'm going through the plot of this episode just by saying what was wrong with the plot of this episode which is what I'm doing um let's see what else was wrong with the plot okay fine Quinn's gonna get transferred, but then Quinn's not gonna get transferred. So, what what happened? Nothing. Um, that's what I'll say about that. Because nothing, unless they do move on on it next year. Um, you know, I I don't know what they're gonna do with that. Who else? Um, Laguerta makes like a 180, and all of a sudden is very nice to Deb. Either she's trying to do something else, which will play out next season. That's what I mean. Like nothing happened. She's a bitch all year. She ends the year a bitch. They, you know, so I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, they have work to do with those characters. A lot of work to do with those characters. Um, Deb, they're really going with the angle of Deb being in love with Dexter, which I don't find as disgusting, and I don't hate it as much. I think of a lot of people as a lot of people do. I'm willing to let it like play out. Although, of course, at the end of the episode, it might not play out at all. Now, um, it felt like something that I heard the writers again. This is an interview. They they said they've been bringing it up since like season two. Like it's something they really wanted to like explore and see if they could do. Um, which they had started in season two. You know, that's not too bad. Or really, really kind of dropped like hints here and there. But it, it's kind of come out of left field. Like, the closest hint we've gotten to it is that Jennifer Carpenter and Michael C. Hall were married in real life. Like, that's it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll let that one slide. Um, 
Let's see now for the positives. What did I like? Again, I'll get to the end, but what did I like? Alright, the, the guy, the weirdo that sent the ice truck killer's hand to Dexter. I knew that was going to be a setup for next season. I'm looking forward to see how that plays out. I said that last week. I still stand by that. Um, he's a weirdo. He's involved with Jamie. He could, you know... Uh, he could be obsessed with Dexter. It could be like a side problem for Dexter if there's like another big bad next year or whatever. Uh, plus whatever's going to go on with Deb, so who knows. Um, Colin Hanks was good again. Um, he was a little more cartoonish this week, yelling at the two dead bodies, like, I can't stay here if you're going to like stink up the place. That was kind of, it was funny, it made me laugh, but then thinking about it now, it was kind of over the top and whatever. Um... Let me see, I'm trying to think if there's something else. If there's anything else. Uh, no. Okay. There's no Harry this episode, which was weird uh, to not see him in the finale, but um, he wasn't really... I didn't really miss him, to be honest. Um, that, I'm not saying anything against him, I just didn't, you know, honestly really notice. Um, Alright. End of the episode. First, let me say that the whole scene with Dexter and Colin Hanks being on the table and him talking to him and everything like that, the whole I'm a father, a son, a serial killer, really funny, really well written, really well done, and I noticed something that the, I think it was like episode three, which was the Tooth Fairy uh, guy from this season, like that was the last time we saw Dexter like set up a kill room this year, we saw him drown the guy and he shot and he killed the guy in Nebraska, but he hasn't done a scene like that since like episode three. And I realized that, oh, I'm loving this scene so much, and I realized one of the reasons I'm enjoying it is because I've missed something like that. They got away from that. Because uh, they were too preoccupied with, you know, trying to trick us with Geller. Which didn't trick anybody. So, um... Yeah. And, again, it brought back the religious aspect that I was enjoying at the first half of the season, like, when they really discusses it and talks about it. Um... I'm telling, you know, Hanks, like, you, you know, use God instead of the other way around and all that stuff like that. You know, well done. Uh, well written, dialogue-wise. Um, but, yeah, okay. I'm still not going to get to the end of, this, end of the episode yet, because first I'm going to talk about the season as a whole, which, as I said this again, first half of this season was wonderful, I thought. The second half was really not good. It, the Nebraska episode brought everything to a halt. They didn't get going again. Things just were spinning their, we their wheels. Then the last, like, three episodes, things started to pick up. Um, you know, the whole Geller thing really brought them down along with the ne Nebraska. Like, I almost already forgot. Like, Edward James almost, like... I Like, who here, who here actually almost, like, forgot he was even a part of the season? Um... Like it almost like the season could have done without him completely, which is why I said they shouldn't have you know made that a whole big thing. Eh, fuck it. Um, I don't know what else. This season for me was starting out as a solid B plus um, to A minus. The subsequent five episodes after the first six brought it down to probably a C to C plus. This finale, I thought, overall was really poorly done. Um, but there was that last minute, which you know we've been waiting for for a long time, and it it you know it was it was great to see. And even the last line of him of Deb catching him and him saying "Oh God" was you know that was really funny. Um, I swear to God, if she runs out of the church, hits her hits her head and has amnesia, I'm done. I don't think they'll do that, and the writers pretty much said they won't do that. So. Um, we got two more seasons to go. I'm so glad that she found out with 24 hours left in this series than instead of, you know, five minutes left or, you know, two hours or whatever. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because as it doesn't matter. The show is a completely different show now with her knowing. It's completely different. It changes the entire game of this show completely. Um, it moves us... It doesn't quite move us into the like the end game of the show. We don't know what that's going to really be yet. I'm sure that'll come in with whoever the last big bad is. Um, but and I, I seriously, I hope they have an episode next year where it's just 
Deborah and Dexter just talking, where Dexter just tells her everything. If it's one hour of television of one just sitting on this side of the room and one on the other and they just speak, that'll be great. Because Hall and Carpenter are great actors and like I would love if that's how they handled it. Just simply. Um, because they tried to get complicated. If they put Dexter in the complicated situation and they don't know how to write him out of it, they do it in a lazy way. They can't do that anymore. I said again, you gotta have a villain that can kick the shit out of Dexter. Someone that can be a physical threat. Um, kind of like, you know, Bane in the new Batman movie. Um, there's things to play around with, but I, I, the fact that the show has an end date is a good thing. The fact that Deborah knows about Dexter is a good thing. That we still get that guy, oh, Lewis, you know, is weird with him. I like to see where that's going. Um, everything else, they gotta get their shit together and figure out, like, endgames for all the characters now. Um, so, the season that went from a B plus or A minus down to a C puts me at a B minus, specifically. Uh, I guess that end scene was kind of worth it for the whole season, but it almost feels like that could have happened during season five. You know? Um, I still enjoyed this season more than I did season 5 but not by much um, it is nowhere near the quality of the two best seasons which was 1 and 4 and it's nowhere near the quality of 2 and 3 I'm putting 2 ahead of 3 now because I feel bad that I like I said last week I criticized 2 for having you know plot holes and Dexter getting lucky forget it Forget it. They could even... Uh. Alright. This is me signing off uh, for Dexter. It comes back in September. That, that's terrible. It comes back in September. That was, you know... It was over. I was like, I have to wait, you know, this long to see where they go with this, but... That's how it goes. Alright, guys. Let me know what you thought. Season as a whole. Episode. Deb finding out. Whatever. Thanks for listening. Adiós.